so for, so, that, so the case held that Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, which prohibits sex discrimination in employment, covers LGBTQ people. So now, nationally, in terms of what the law says, LGBTQ people can't be discriminated against in any employment setting that is covered by Title VII. And the reasoning of the case is that, you know, any prohibition on sex discrimination inherently covers LGBTQ people. It's always sex discrimination, which means that the places in federal law that prohibit sex discrimination, um, which include education, credit, housing, and healthcare, um, those are all places where we as LGBTQ people have, have protections under federal law as, as a result of the Bostock decision. Now that doesn't mean that people are gonna follow the law, but, but as a result of the, the June 2015 decision, any place that you know, prohibits sex discrimination, then LGBTQ people are covered as well as under the constitution and the lower courts uh, that have had cases applying the Bostock ruling, which wasn't in, in the employment employment context to other contexts have essentially held that yes, you know, there is no difference between Title VII's prohibition and Title IX's prohibition. So these are expansive pr protections across um, federal civil rights laws. So, so that is that is true. I think where we remain incredibly vulnerable is A, people don't know that that's the, the status. B, people don't follow the law. Um, and that, you know, I think there are all sorts of ways, particularly when it comes to anti-trans discrimination that people are trying to continue to be discriminatory. You know, and then this sort of secondary conversation, which is we're persecuting people of faith is, you know, A, not true. There are many protections across these civil rights statutes for people of faith. You know, these, these you know, generally applicable civil rights statutes apply and have always applied, um, you know, regardless of, of faith and that there are carve outs for religious institutions and other places when they are operating as, a, you know, as some sort of faith-based institution. That does not mean that individuals are empowered when they are operating general, you know, whether they're opening businesses to the public under state law, whether they're, you know, being employed in a, in a secular context to then be discriminatory it does not mean that people are faith are being persecuted. It means that the way our legal system works and has always worked is that if you have a, a law of general applicability um, that incidentally burdens someone's faith, that that isn't enough to overcome the broad interest that we as, society, as a society have in rooting out discrimination. And so ultimately, Ultimately, I think that we have a lot of work to do to educate people about their rights and to stop all of these attacks at the state level. All right. Let me ask you one more question because <laughs> only, I'll be really quick because this is uh, I just saw this video and it just sort of blew my mind. We're going to talk about it after you leave. Um, uh, the uh, the idea that trans folks have now catapulted up a ladder of oppression that the that they're that they are, there is some type of benefit now uh, or special sort of um, prominence or accord that is given to trans people in, uh, in the context of, of the, the broader LGBTQ communities, let's say. Give me your sense of like that perspective, of that idea. I mean, I almost don't want to credit the conversation because the whole LGBTQ community faces discrimination because of norms and assumptions about how men and women should be, right? Like the, the idea that, you know, there has to be a sex binary and that all men have to be exclusively attracted to women and that everyone assigned male at birth has to grow up and, and identify as a man. I mean, these are all the same set of assumptions, norms, and rules that hurt the entire community and disproportionately hurt, you know, people of color within the community when we think about the overlay of all the discrimination that is at the core of our entire legal and political structures in the United States. So, you know, it's, it's I think the impulse to pit sort of trans people against cis LGB people is, uh, you know, is, is ultimately just going to serve the existing dominant structures. Um, and it's really depressing to me that we're having this conversation at all. I think if you look at the statistics and you look at the realities of what it means to be trans and the type of discrimination that we are facing as, as a community, it's just absurd to me that anyone would Get, locate a, some degree of political power within transness. Um, whether, you know, and I've seen these conversations play out um, and, and, and a lot of it is coming from, you know, this sort of self-victimized Substack brigade uh, that is out here, you know, talking about how they're not allowed to criticize trans people enough, um, which, you know, A, 
I, I, I think that, yeah, you know, you're allowed to do whatever you want. There just may be, you know, ways in which you are held accountable for those decisions. Um, but that the idea that there's some sort of power and transness because some people want to defend our right to exist, I, I think is untrue. And the fact that we're even having a debate over whether trans people do or should exist should show you how little political power that we actually have and how depressing this all is. Couldn't, couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Trey Strangio, uh, ACLU, Deputy Director for Transgender Justice. So, I, you know, we set up this uh, clip, and I, I, only, uh, I, I just happened to see the clip this morning. And so it obviously um, resonated with me because I knew that we were having uh, Chase on uh, this afternoon. And it has been completely, maybe, I, I was just wondering, maybe I've just been, I'm missing things. That maybe in some way it is like um, it's, you know, that the trans folk are having like something turned at one point where trans people were enjoying all of these sort of special privileges. I right. mean, when you like just even when I'm saying that as a way that I'm, you know, I'm being a little bit over the top here. They're like the capital people in the Hunger Games. They have everything. And the rest of us, we've got nothing. But my... It's so online it's brain broken by online like one-upsmanship all like having yeah. a hard time Let's, yeah, you're, you're breaking up a little bit matt um but just when i'm saying special privileges like i just think in my mind of all the times i've heard the right complain about certain segments of the population who are marginal who have had who are subject to to um you know physical verbal hate who have a diminished uh, set of rights that they can exercise they have diminished access to um to to all to do a wide range of things uh every time i hear that it it, it 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 immediately makes me think of that to hear someone who ostensibly perceives themselves on the right or against the status quo i mean on the left or against the status quo i mean this it's a real shame, but let's let's play this clip. Do we have that clip? This is Here it is. At the mini. This is uh, Glenn Greenwald, and and who is his guest? Um, Louise. Katie Herzog. Katie Herzog. Herzog. So Katie Herzog is a feminist who, um, I, from my understanding, is openly anti-trans and glenn has cited her before and now they're speaking together on his podcast. yeah and i should say like we should we should we should we should we should temper that like i i mean i don't i i think it's like i think the idea here is is that there is a an a an ideological and intellectual veneer that is um that is laid over uh anti-trans position and 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 and, and as far as i understand it and a feminist position, there, I want to say. There are, uh, there are, you know, in, in, in various ideologies, it, it, there are some elements of feminism. I think they're, they're uh, you know, uh, not necessarily in the, the center of feminism that uh, perceive uh, trans women as in some way um, n not... D diminishing the experience of being a woman, which is some of the arguments ridiculous, as if trans people don't have a million more uh, or, you know, discriminatory elements to face um because well, they are not you know didn't experience all of the the you know s sexual discrimination or I, I don't even know um this is where the term turf comes from this was the argument much of the argument that author jk rowling was making and that's where a lot of this um publicly uh, was discussed i mean it, it, it's um uh, well all right let's listen to this clip declare yourself non-binary or trans you kind of catapult up the ladder of oppression in a way that absolutely confers very concrete benefits and anyone who denies that is being dishonest. Pause it. Absolutely. I, I just want to I just want to be uh dishonest here for a moment. What? Like how does what concrete benefits? Name them. Besides being able to like maybe you think dunk on you online because that's not society. That's Twitter. 
Glenn? Yeah, Does I mean, he it's, know it's the just, difference anymore? It's, it is, uh, well, I mean, I, let's just put aside just like the individual and just sort of like this perspective that somehow if you declare yourself to be non-binary or trans, that you get concrete advantages. Um, now, I guess the most generous uh, way of looking at this would be that he means within the context of other people who are, um, you know, who are uh, in some way marginalized by the rest of society. But I just, you, if, if, if that idea is out there, you really need to be uh, clear on what it is. Because um, the idea that, I, I mean, I, I can't even imagine what that is. I mean, again, it reeks of the, of what I heard 10 to 15 years ago of gay people are looking for special rights that um at different times black people are looking for special rights that are going to allow them something that other people don't have and i just i i am at a complete loss to even imagine what those concrete um benefits are I mean, well, maybe, maybe he'll explain. Maybe you get. Um, I doubt it. I mean, maybe you get. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Like, uh, maybe there are essay contests out there that maybe I like. You know, you can enter if you've you've, it, you've gone like, through. We're in an but aesthetic just, critique of liberal online culture, and like you're, but, but there's not a well, but discussion that's what, about policy. But, but but wait a sec. But that's that 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 may be motivating that particular uh, speaker. But the story of trans people getting special rights is a fundamentally reactionary right-wing position. Like that talking point, he's putting it in the context of, you know, relative to other oppressed or marginalized people. But in general, right, this is what we've heard from the right time and time again. That whenever no, you afford... Yeah individuals the same rights as is afforded everyone else you can get married you can get housing i mean um i mean you could be listen you could be denied housing and be trans because maybe i don't know you you have uh, a dog and we don't allow dogs here or um you uh, like to have loud parties and uh well, you know uh grandma lives upstairs and she wants to quiet whatever it is but the idea that you get special benefits uh for being trans in this society is just bizarre and it is bizarre out of the mouths of right wingers it is bizarre out of the mouths of anti establishment you know, uh, writers, civil libertarians, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, and yeah. and so um, it is it, it is a it is a, a strange uh, era that we're living in, without a doubt. Um, but there so it do is. Do we want them to finish? Yeah. OK, let's let it finish. Maybe we're not seeing Just the last. Absolutely. You know, what's funny is that the, the population that no longer uh, you can't opt into this oppression is gay men. If you're if you're a, a, a cis white gay man, um, you are now at the at the top or the bottom. I can't figure out where it is off the hierarchy, but you're the bottom. You're at the bottom. The bottom now. The bottom now. You were at the top. You were at the top of the oppression scale, and now you're at the bottom of the. Uh, if you're even e e if you even register at all, you're probably right, just right. like a white dude. A white dude. You're a white dude. Exactly. Um, so I find that really interesting. You know, uh, you had your you had your moment in the sun, but it was very short. Lesbians, I think we had around 2002 when the first season of The L Word came out. That was our high point. And then it's just been downhill. Yeah, downhill. when Ellen came out, that was a good moment. Pause it one second. Um, and uh, certainly there is still a tremendous amount of homophobia in this country, obviously. Um, and but. Since Ellen DeGeneres came out, um, we have things like marriage equality. Um, we have, there is certainly no doubt that the rights of gay people have increased over the past 20 years. But they, they don't. But and and the, um, the salience as a cultural issue 
is the Republicans are no longer trying, and there's still some, to be fair, there's still some, but the Republicans are no longer trying to capitalize on homophobia for electoral advantage in the way that they have moved on. And we, we know, and you can look at it in terms of what, um, you know, what, what has happened with anti-Asian violence. We know when this happens, when this gets unleashed into the ether, the idea that, oh my God, high school sports are going to be, they're about to dissolve high school sports. It starts to have real implications for 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 kids in schools and for adults. They're they're tr- trying to burn the bridge behind them after there's been progress for gay people because they want to make an aesthetic argument about not being able to be on the higher rung of the oppression ladder in intellectual ish online arguments with people. And what that allows is for people that are watching them who already might be transphobic in their own right to have another excuse and another narrative, another arrow in their quiver in order to continue to to deny trans people rights. I mean, that is, it is so reprehensible as, as people who have experienced that kind of discrimination to then turn around and sneer at trans people for being higher on the oppression ladder. This is about your guys' online frivolous debates. But the rest of us, are talking about people's human rights, all right? I don't really have time for that anymore. It's so insular and narcissistic and upsetting, to especially to see that from Glenn. We already know this is where he's gone, but it just gets worse and worse every day. Um, you know, one of the things that we saw with like, the so-called intellectual dark web was the sort of intellectual cover for anti-Muslim uh, rhetoric. And this is this is a similar exercise. Yep. It is a uh, it is an intellectual cover for um, really just bigotry. Uh, ultimately, I mean, I don't know if that he or she are personally uh, bigoted in that way, but their rhetoric. Um, I don't know. I mean, just even the framing that there is an oppression ladder uh, in and of itself, I think, is um, is uh, 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 pretty stunning.